Thousands of people appeared behind them, a sea of humanity. I said, well, who were they? He said, and I want you to go back and tell them also, because most will not come into a church any longer mm -hmm. to hear my name. I said, but God, I don't love them. I don't know these people. I know my family. I love my mother. He said, Ian, I love them. I desire all of them to come to know me. I said, I don't understand that love. How can I go back down a tunnel into darkness and back into my body? He said, son, tilt your head. Feel the liquid drain from your eye. Now open your eye, Ian, and see. As I opened my eye, I was instantly back in my body, lying on a slab in a morgue with an Indian doctor holding my right foot, cupped in his left hand with a scalpel pricking the base of my foot like a dead piece of meat. And as he saw me open my eye, the poor doctor went through the ceiling. I said, God, if that's true, can I look out my other eye? As I turned my head to the left in the door where the nurses had worked on me in the A&E, they saw me terror and hit them and they smashed into each other as they ran. I can feel nothing from my neck down. I said, God, if I've seen you, can you please heal me and enable me to walk out of the hospital and live a normal life? The power was like electricity coming from the tip of my head. Death had come in through my feet. Now life was coming in. And within three or four hours, I was totally healed and walked out of the hospital. And I believe in the resurrection power and the healing power. And I said, God, what's happened to me? He said, you are a reborn Christian. He said, read a Bible. I said, I don't know what a reborn Christian is. Do you have to die and come back to life or something? He said, no, read a Bible, son. I said, I don't have one. He said, your dad has. In six weeks, in 1982, I read the entire Bible. All my sins had been forgiven when I prayed in the ambulance. Ian came back as a witness to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. He testifies that heaven and hell exist, and where we spend eternity depends on the decision we make now. Now I want to introduce you to one more gentleman. His name is Bill Weiss. Bill wants you to know that hell is a real place. He knows because he was sent there for 23 agonizing minutes. When he was in hell, Bill said he had a real body. He felt real pain. And he had a real encounter with a 13-foot-tall demon. When he came back with a warning that it was real. We went to a prayer meeting, came home like any other normal night. And I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning to get a glass of water. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body. And I found myself falling through the air and I landed in this actual prison cell in hell. This was an out-of-body experience. I've never had one like this before. Uh, there were these demonic creatures in this cell. Reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over their bodies. Uh, these particular two were about 12 or 13 feet tall. They had absolutely no mercy, an extreme hatred for God and for man. The one picked me up, threw me into the wall, tremendous strength. I collapsed on the floor. I felt bones broken. The other one dug his claws into my chest, tore the flesh open. You have a body in hell, but it can withstand this torment. I was taken out of the cell and I was placed over next to this large raging pit of fire. This pit was just a huge uh, hole in the ground with flames raging high up in this open cavern. It's the most awful sight to see a person on fire, burning, screaming. The demons are tormenting people. The smells are so foul and putrid. There's not a drop of water. I, I was so thirsty. The screams were so loud from just millions of people at the top of their lungs screaming that it's not metaphorical or allegorical. It's real literal pain you're gonna feel in hell. There's no love of any kind. You understand you're never gonna get rescued. There's no angels to protect you because you know we're made eternal beings in God's image and so our soul is eternal. And to know you'll be there for all eternity without hope. Isaiah 38, 18 says, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. You have no hope for Jesus because it's too late for them. The decision's final. And, and the darkness, Exodus 10, 21 talks about a darkness that may be felt. So that's not an exaggeration. It just consumes any of the light from the flames. It is so dark that you can actually feel the darkness. 
It's the most horrible thing. People's minds can't even imagine the horrors of hell. Your mind can't even go there. Any one of these things would kill you. And that's why people need to know how important this decision is to make that we have in life here. You know, we serve a loving God. He doesn't want anybody to go to this place. It was made for the devil and his angels, not for man. But man will go there because God loves man so much, he gave him a free will to choose. And that's why God wants us as Christians to share the gospel. And he doesn't want anyone to go to this place. He wept when he saw people falling back in this tunnel that we came out of. Uh, it hurts him to see people going into hell. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you will end up in this place for all eternity. When I was viewing all this torment and people burning in the fire, I began being lifted up through this tunnel. Mm -hmm. And that's where this bright light appeared. Suddenly this bright light. I knew immediately who it was. I didn't see his face, but I saw the outline of a man standing in this bright, pure, holy light, like no light I've ever seen. And I immediately knew who it was, and I just cried out his name, Jesus. And he said, I am. I, I collapsed at his feet. I, I don't know if I died, but he touched me. And when I came to, I started having thoughts, and he would answer my thoughts. Yeah, I, I thought, Lord, why did you send me to that horrible yeah. place? He said, because many people do not believe hell is real. He said, even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. Which that statement surprised me, because I thought all Christians believe in hell. Many of them do not. They believe in annihilationism or universalism or soul sleep. None of that's true. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 46, that these shall go into everlasting life and these shall go into everlasting punishment. They went to hell because they denied Jesus as their personal savior. They had the choice in life and they rejected him, even though God offered himself to people throughout their whole lives. The only way is knowing Jesus Christ and repenting of your sins. We've brought you real-life stories of real-life people. They have been beyond the grave, and they've come back. And they've come back with a message that needs to touch your heart, because it's real. Jesus Christ told about it. The apostles told about it. We've believed it for centuries, that God Almighty is in charge of things, and that there is a heaven, and there is a hell. And you and I walk through this life, and we make decisions. And we'll either make a decision that says, yes, I want to be with you forever, or I don't care. I want to live my life, and I want to have my way forever. The decision is up to you. But the Bible says that Jesus stands at the door of your heart, and he knocks. And he says, I died for you. I gave my life for you. I don't want you to be in hell. I experienced the suffering of hell so that you might be free, that your sins might be forgiven, that everything you've ever done might be cleansed, a clean slate, and you would be part of my family forever and ever. Jesus holds out his hand to you right now, and he says, do you want eternity? Will you be with me in paradise? He told the dying thief on the cross, this day, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Would you like to know paradise? If you do, just bow your head right now and say, Jesus, I turn it over to you. I turn my life over to you. I don't want to go to hell. I want to send, spend eternity with you and the Father in heaven. I repent of my sin. I take you as my Savior, and I give you my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you've heard my prayer, and thank you that you've come into my heart. God loves you. And the Bible says, whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You live for him. From this moment on, he is yours. Well, thank you for being with us for this special program, Life Beyond the Grave. God bless you, and goodbye. <music>